So in this lecture I am going to take a complex example or you can say a lengthy example and we will uh, see step by step explanation how to convert a relation which is in first normal form to BCNF right. Already I have discussed from first to second from second to third right. But in this video I am going to combine all the steps means from first to BCNF how we are going to convert this relation. So this is the relation and these are the functional dependencies given in this relation right. And this relation is in first normal form if you want to check out obviously we need to find out the candidate key for this first step is this one because I have already discussed many videos many in many previous videos right. So how can you check in this is in first normal form obviously we will find out first of all the candidate keys and then we will check if there is any partial dependency then there this is not in second normal form and that is why it is in first normal form by default the relation which is written something like this this is we consider that it is in first normal form right. So now find out the candidate key first of all how to find out that also I have already discussed how to find out candidate keys from a given relation in my previous videos. I will provide you the link of the complete DBMS playlist in the description box you can check out there right. So now take all the uh, attributes of the relation and find out the closer obviously it will find out all the attributes right now try to discard the attributes using functional dependencies right a can drive b d so if you have a i can discard b and d right see b can drive c means if you have b you can drive c now obviously if you have a i can drive b right and if i, I have b then i can drive c so i can discard c as well using e i can drive e and f so if you have e you can discard f and g sorry f and g right now if you have a and e a and e so you can derive h so you can discard h because i have a and e so the remaining attributes are only a and e find out the closer c using a i can drive a e definitely using a i can drive b d using b i can drive c using e i can drive f g and i can drive h all the attributes i can drive so a is what you can say it is a super key we cannot discard any more elements any more attributes from here so this is super key now proper subset is a and e obviously no proper subset would be super key because a closer would only contain a then bd and then we can drive c right not all the attribute e closer can contain e f and g only right so no this is neither this is super key or no this is super key so that is why we can say that a e is our candidate key right now prime attributes are a and e fine find out more candidate keys are available or not if prime attributes are available on the right hand side of any functional dependencies means there are still more candidate keys but a and e are not on the right hand side so there is only one candidate key that is a e. fine now find out which functional dependency is creating problem it means which functional dependency is partial dependency right see a can drive b d partial dependency means the proper subset of this candidate key drives known prime attribute then that is partial dependency a is partial subset and b d yeah this is non prime attribute because prime attributes are only a and e so this is partial dependency right is b proper subset of this one no so obviously this cannot be a partial dependency e is proper subset of this one yes f g are non prime attribute yes so this is partial dependency a is proper subset of candidate key no a is itself a candidate key or you can say super key so this is not partial dependency means these these two functional dependencies are creating problem because of these two this relation is not in second normal form it is in first normal form now we have identified the dependencies which are creating problem so next step is what take out this one this functional dependency and find out a closer a closer would be this one a b c d right using these i will find out now put all these attribute is in one relation right find out e closer e closer would be e f g put all these attributes in another relation right 
and put all the remaining attributes in a third relation. Remaining attribute is h only, right? But we cannot put only one attribute in this. So now what you have to do? See, now there should be something common, right? because in this and this there is no common in this and this also no common so when you will join there should be something common be to to be a lossless joint decomposition right if nothing is common between the relation then this is lossy joint decomposition right and we want lossless joint decomposition and dependency preserving so if we join this one and this one so what should we put common here see the common attribute should be super key or you can say candidate key of at least one sub relation right to be that decomposition a lossless joint decomposition right so suppose i put a common here obviously a is candidate key for this one because because using a i can drive b c d all the attributes so it's better to put a common you can put b common either c or d you can put the, these uh, things common and you can check out right those would be loss c joint decomposition right now between this and this what should be the common attribute it's better to put what e common because e is, e is what candidate key for this sub relation or you can say super key for the sub relation because e can drive f and g all the attribute of this sub relation right so now this is our third relation or in simple terms you can say one i mean in one relation we always put the candidate key see remaining attribute is h and obviously the candidate key is what a so we put a here so that thing also you can consider or you can apply the logic which I am uh, telling here in this video, right? So now we need to check this is lossless joint decompo decomposition, right? But we need to check the, you know, uh, highest normal form for this also, this also and this also because we are supposed to convert it into BCNF, right? Now check it is converted into BCNF or not or it is still in first NF or in second NF or third NF, we can't say. So for that we need to find out the functional dependencies and candidate keys, right? So functional dependency for this relation would be how to find out functional dependencies that video I have already discussed in detail. I will provide the link of that video particularly in the i button you can check out there. Here I am just writing the functional dependencies right. So the functional dependency for this one would be here A can drive B, C, D because when you find out A closer you will get this one and A to A is trivial and B, C, D right. When you will find out B closer then you will get b to c this functional dependency right how to find out you have to consider this functional dependency right now if you find out c closer then what would be the case c closer would be c only because c using c i cannot drive anything so this is trivial so we are not going to take it d closer also we can only get d nothing else so this is also trivial we are not going to take it right now A can drive all the attributes so no need to check with A, B, A, C and A, D like this because that would be duplicate right and B can drive C, C and D are driving nothing so no need to check B, C, B, D and C, D right you will you will not get anything you will check you can if you want to check out you can check out right so you will find out only these two functional dependencies here right now in R2 functional dependency would be if you find out E closer then F g would be there if you find out f closer nothing you will get f to f trivial would be there g closer nothing you will get using this functional dependency right so there is only one functional dependency right e can drive all the attributes so no need to check ef closer and e g closer because obviously that would be uh, a duplicate and if you find out fg then that also would be trivial only fg you can drive using fg fg closer would be fg only right so no need to take there is only one uh, functional dependency here now here functional dependency would be see if you find out h closer you will get only h trivial if you find out a closer then you will get this one but a to a is trivial b c b c d are not part of this one so no need to take this one we are not going to take e closer would be e f g e2 is trivial f g is not part of this sub relation so we are not going to take it right so now one relation one uh, dependency would be there here a e if you find out a e closer then that would be a using a i can drive b d using b i can drive c using e i can drive f and g right using a e i can drive 
H all the attributes. A to A, A, A is trivial. C, D is not part of the subrelation, C is not part of the subrelation, F is no and G, only H is part of the subrelation. So, A you can drive H, right. Same you can find out AH, same you can find, find out EH, right, you will get nothing. All the attributes, those you will get in closer that are not part of the subrelation, right. So, we are not going to take those functional dependencies. So, only one functional dependency would be there in this case, right. Now find out the normal form for this, this and this. Same for that you have to find out candidate key, the same process you will apply in each subrelations, right. I am not going to apply again because we have already discussed one time. So when you apply the same process then the candidate key for the subrelation would be A. From here only you can check A can drive all the attributes, right. So candidate key would be one candidate key is A and A is not on the right hand side so there is only one candidate key. Here the candidate key would be only E and here the candidate key would be A E. Now see is this partial dependency? No. Is this partial dependency? No. Means this is in second NF definitely but is it in third NF? See check. For three NF two conditions are there one of those two conditions should be satisfied. Either left hand side is super key or right hand side is prime attribute. Is left hand side super key? Yes. So, this is not transitive dependency, right. Is left hand side super key? No. Is right hand side prime attribute? No, because prime attribute is only one A. So, this is transitive dependency. So, this relation is not in third normal form, it is in second normal form, R1. Check for this one. E, the left hand side is what? only one dependency is there and the E is what candidate key or you can say super key, right. So, if the left hand side is super key of the functional dependencies of all the functional dependencies then that relation is in BCNF, that rule we already discussed, right. So, this is in BCNF. This one left hand side is what super key or you can say candidate, key. obviously candidate key is super key also, right. So, this is also in BCNF. But this is in second NF, right. So, it is not like that we have got two BCNF, so it is in BCNF now. No, it is still in second normal form because the lowest one we are going to choose, right. That is second normal form. Now, you have to convert this subrelation only into third NF or BCNF. This we have already got two subrelations, right. Now, we are going to work on this R1 only. Now here which functional dependency is creating a problem for third NF? This one only because this is not creating a problem. This is not transitive dependency, this is transitive dependency. So now take B closer. Now see we are not going to consider now this functional dependency because now we are decomposing this relation R1 and we have already got the functional dependency set for this subrelation. So now we will consider this one to find out B closer. So, B closer would be B and using B I can write C only, B C. So, one subrelation would be suppose R11 that is B C and remaining would be in second subrelation that is A and D. Now, we have to put something common right to get a lossless joint decomposition. Common should be at least super Q of one subrelation. As we know B can drive C, so B would be definitely super key or you can say candidate key for this subrelation. So, better to put B common, right. Now find out functional dependencies and then find out that this is or this is in BCNF or not or still in third NF or still in second NF. This is having only two attributes, so this is definitely in BCNF, right. Check for this one, find out functional dependencies first. F12 set would be, if you find out A closer you will get A can drive B C D means B D because C is not part of the subrelation, right. If you find out D closer nothing you will get trivial functional dependency you will get. If you find out B closer then you will get B and C, B to B is trivial and C is not part of the subrelation so we are going to take only this one, right because A can drive all the attributes, so no need to check AD and AB closer, right. And if you 
want to check BD closer, then you will get what? B, D and C only. So, BD is trivial, C is not part of this one. So, we are not going to take that functional dependency also, right? So, there is only one functional dependency. Now, if you find out the candidate key, then candidate key would you will get that would be A only, right? Now, if you check left hand side of this functional dependency is A, that is candidate key or you can say super key. So, this is definitely in BCNF. So, now this is in BCNF. Right now, ulti finally, we have converted it into BCNF, right? Because and now, how many subrelations are there? One, two, three, and four. We are not going to consider this because we have decomposed it into this one to, to convert it into BCNF because it was in second NF, right? So, four subrelations are there this one, this one, this one, and this one. And if you are asked how many subrelations would be required to convert this into BCNF, then your answer would be four subrelations would be required, these four subrelations, right? This is how, this is the step by step explanation, how we are going to convert a relation which is in first NF to, first NF to BCNF, right? So that's it for today. Now I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.